This video will focus on medications to avoid when you have Parkinson's disease. And the main reason for this video is because I have many patients that come to my clinic and they ask me, doctor, uh, what medications can I take? What medications do I need to avoid? And of course, they go to the internet, they go to some books and other literature, and sometimes they might be a little bit confused. So the main goal of these videos is to try to clarify medications that need to be avoided. Now, the most common medications uh, that need to be avoided in Parkinson's disease are the dopamine receptor blockers. We have to remember that in Parkinson's disease, there are low levels of dopamine. Those cells in the substantia nigra are dying slowly, and these are cells that make dopamine. So, if we use dopamine blockers, what these medications will do is that they will prevent the available dopamine in the brain to reach its target. And that way, what will happen is that there's going to be, there's going to be a worsening of the clinical picture of the patient with uh, Parkinson's. This is a quite comprehensive list of drugs that are known to worsen the Parkinson's disease. And there are four drugs that I want you to pay attention in this particular slide. The first one is haloperidol, Haldol. Haloperidol is a medication that is commonly used for the treatment of psychosis, hallucinations, uh, irritability, and many times when a patient is in the, in the hospital and they have some uh, irritability or they're having some hallucinations, uh, in the middle of the night, then uh, the nurse will call the, the doctor, and it is a, a very commonly medication prescribed because it works very well. It helps calming down the, the patient and calming down any hallucinations, or uh, if the patient is uh, combative, uh, this medication can be quite helpful. Now, this can worsen the symptoms of Parkinson's disease readily, even from the first dose. There are three other medications that need to be recognized. The first one is metoclopramide. second one is Plocorperacin, and the third one is promethazine. These medications, uh, the brand name used in the United States, include Reglan, Compassin, and Phenergan, and they are used for the treatment of nausea and vomiting. There are two other drugs that I'd like to mention because even though they are considered atypical antipsychotics, meaning that they should have a lower risk of causing any problems with the uh, worsening of Parkinson's disease, I have still observed some of my patients that they have an increase in their symptoms associated with these medications. The first one is risperidone, and the second one is olanzapine, and these are two medications that are used for the treatment of, uh, once again, hallucinations or irritability or patients that become uh, belligerent, especially during the night when they are in the hospital. So the next question is, uh, you know, when, when are these medications used? You know, when should I be paying attention whether I may be able to receive one of these medications? So the first one is uh, before or after surgery. And Phenergan, Compassin, and Reglan are medications that are used to prevent nausea and vomiting. And sometimes many patients will receive these medications even before the surgery begins as a prophylaxis to prevent the nausea and vomiting from happening. Metoclopramide is a medication that is used for the treatment of gastroparesis. In many cases or diabetic gastroparesis, however, Parkinson's disease patients also may experience gastroparesis associated with autonomic insufficiency. Haloperidol, risperidone, and olanzapine are commonly used for the treatment of hallucinations. So the next question is, if, if I cannot have any of this medication, what can my doctor use to help me? Well, you know, in my experience for the treatment of nausea and vomiting, my favorite medications are Tigan and Sofran. They are safer in patients with Parkinson's disease. And of course, you have to look at what other medications uh, the patient is taking. But generally, for Parkinson's disease, these medications are considered effective and they should not worsen the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. For the treatment of hallucinations, commonly associated with uh, the intake of levodopa, better alternatives are ketiapine and clozapine. And even though these medications, they are not free of side effects, they seem to be a better option. 
for the gastroparesis. Unfortunately, many years ago, we had some medications that had to be taken off the market. And at this time, there is a medication that I recommend to my patients if they are able to obtain it. It's called Domperidon. And sometimes they can get it at a compounding pharmacy. Sometimes they get it from other countries. You know, they have to be careful. You have to know exactly where you're getting your medications from. But that may be a good option for the gastroparesis. Other medications to avoid in Parkinson's disease uh, basically depend on the kind of medications that you're taking at this time. If you're taking monoamine oxidase inhibitor like rosagiline, selegiline, or cytis uh, selegiline, you have to tell your doctor before having surgery as uh, there can be interactions with these uh, medications. Monoamine oxidase is an enzyme that is present in the, in the stomach. It's also present in the brain. In the stomach, the one that is mostly present is called monoamine oxidase A. In the brain, the one that is mostly present is monoamine oxidase B. What, this medica- what these enzymes do in the brain is that they break down the dopamine that is in the brain. So the goal of these medications, the monoamine oxidase inhibitor, is to block these enzymes. So the dopamine will remain for a little bit uh, longer time period in the brain and the patient will benefit from the, uh, from the uh, benefit of the dopamine. However, patients that are undergoing surgery, many medications that are used for anesthesia might have uh, contraindications or interactions with this monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So it is very important and a good uh, time period for you to stop taking these medications that I, I usually consider safe is a period of two weeks. Again, this is a short uh, summary about the medications that needs to be avoided in Parkinson's disease, my recommendation is always talk to your doctor. These are only guidelines. You should always discuss with your doctor before you perform any medication changes, and you also have to let them know before you have any surgery. Thank you for watching the video, and as always, every comment that you may have is always welcome.